everybody. Jeff Antoniak here. Welcome to Guided Listening this week. So we've got a super classic recording. This is called The Sidewinder by Lee Morgan, the great trumpet player. He composed this tune. It's on the album called The Sidewinder. The band includes Joe Henderson on tenor sax, Barry Harris on the piano, Bob Cranshaw on the bass, and the great Billy Higgins on the drums. So we're going to be listening to what these great gentlemen were playing. Um, often we end up focusing a lot on some rhythm section things because, you know, I think a lot of melody players, horn players, guitar players um, are, are checking these videos out. And it's great that, you know, we could talk about, you know, licks and transcriptions and all that kind of stuff. But to me, I think a lot of us can learn a lot from understanding what's going on underneath. Now, of course, for the rhythm section players, that's you're a thing, right? So if you're a drummer, knowing what Billy Higgins is getting into on this recording, oh my God. If you're a piano player, listening to the comping that Barry Harris is doing, this is going to be very interesting, very interesting. Um, last guided listening, last week, um, I let you know that I've got like I, two, maybe three lesson openings. Um, I don't do a ton of private lessons, but I do enjoy them and, uh, and I learn a lot and folks, you know, cover a lot of ground. So I got a lot of, uh, a lot of response, which is great. So I'm going to see how many folks, um, I can get in, you know, it'll be a handful and who can be on the waiting list. So if you are interested in doing some private lessons with me, send an email and, um, and you know, whether it's right away or whether it's three or six or 10 months down the road, um, I would love to work with you. But of course, I can work with you, literally Jeff working with you, seven days a week inside Jazzwire. It's not a private lesson. It's not a synchronous experience. It's like this, asynchronous. You can stop. You can rewind. But I am talking to you. So if I can't get you in for lessons, if, uh, if the price of the lessons is prohibitive or whatever, Jazzwire is not. $50 a month. Um, for Jazzwire. There's no better value out there and it's a great way for us to work together. So jump into Jazzwire. You can also take the free trial and see what we're into. Okay, so let's listen to this thing. The style of this is a boogaloo. So uh, I think if you look down in the comments, there's going to be all sorts of people with their jazz history chops talking about, you know, the boogaloo and, and blue notes and, you know, what is a boogaloo? It's sort of this funky straight eighths thing, but we're going to hear that there's a swing aspect to it. If we had to oversimplify sort of this boogaloo sound, it's straight eighths, kind of like a rock tune a little bit, but there's more going on than that. So let's just jump right in and uh, listen to the Sidewinder. There's a lot here for us to investigate. All right, so we start off with a whole chorus. It's sort of a twice as long blues, a 24 measure blues. So let's listen to the piano. Uh, 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 uh. And there's some little sort of rhythmic fills in there, but that's mostly what's going on. This is Barry, Barry Harris. Barry Harris could play whatever he wanted, but he's playing this repetitive sound. He is not once made anything up yet. A little break there. Okay, and now we hear that the melody is based on that rhythm. One, bump, bump, one, bump. So it's sort of a displaced Charleston rhythm if we want to get slightly, uh, you know, doctoral thesis on this whole thing. But yeah, it's this classic rhythm and instead of, you know, it slid one, me one beat later. So okay, the comping is we could call it set, it was composed. Perhaps Lee Morgan said, hey Barry, I want you to comp this figure. And Barry was like, what, once, twice? And he's like, no, how about like 900 times? So let's listen to the recording and let's hear what happens to the comping with Barry Harris. There's a written out bass line. That sort of feel, right? So Bob Cranshaw is playing that. A composed bass line. Not very jazz-like so far, right? Comping is set, the bass line is set. Let's go back to the top and listen to Billy Higgins before the horns come in, and we can hear that it's this It's a straight eighths feel, but he's swinging. Dang, 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 dang. There's a swing in there. It's the craziest thing. We've all been taught, is it swing or is it straight eighths? There's a big or in the middle there. Swing or straight eighths, right? 
and he's kind of living in the middle. And and this is so great with Billy Higgins because there, there was this aspect that his ride pattern was a little straighter than some. Drummers, you're allowed to yell at me or disagree, but but you know, his 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 ride pattern had a real personal vibe to it, as all the greats did. Um, but then here on a straight thing, it's got a little swing to it. So it's, it's this awesome living in the middle thing. And that's that grease part of a great groove that, you know, yeah, I'm here trying to analyze, but at the end of the day, we have to smile and throw up our hands and go, damn, right? Like that's, that's what's going on. But we can talk about what's happening. And it is this, it's swinging, but not, it's straight, but not. Check it out. That symbol. Thank you, Dan. 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 Whereas that comping rhythm is right on the end of three. Da 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 I want to top and and these little hits, a tritone thirds and sevenths between the sax and the trumpet. It's a great sound. And there's a call and response aspect to the melody. The two measures, and then there's an answer. The rhythmic call. And then the melodic answer, we could say, rhythm. Here's that break. Pretty slow. They do it again. Here's the call. And that's the response. Call. Response. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very catchy melody, right? That repetitive uh, rhythm. And just keep checking out Bob Cranshaw and Billy Higgins. Whew. Barry Harris on the piano. By the way, has Barry Harris done anything other than that rhythm yet? First solo. So now that we're in solos, we can imagine the bass is going to walk or the comping is going to be like jazz comping, right? But no. It is the same, this is now what, four choruses in. We're over a hundred measures in, and Barry Harris is playing that same rhythm. Bob Cranshaw, pretty much playing that same bass line. Listen for big drum fills. Right here. That was from the end of the tune to the top. That's where there should be a big drum fill. So this is a whole different way of playing jazz. A composed bass line that we get to embellish and personalize, but we can't leave it. We can't really leave it or it stops being this song. That comping, he's still doing it. And Billy Higgins is laying down that incredible groove, but is he doing much else? We can hear on the snare he is hitting the comping pattern. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, there was a fill. Maybe the first drum fill in the song, 175 measures in. So we haven't even talked about Lee Morgan yet. Oh my God, one of the absolute greats of trumpet of improvisation and certainly this boogaloo style on Blue Note. And how he's playing this great bluesy stuff but then all the great bebop uh, elements in it. And that really is sort of, I think, what post-bop was all about. Combining those gospel, soulful, bluesy things along with the bebop into this new form. Joe Henderson. Woo! So he's playing some cool blues stuff to start with here. But it's not sounding like, you know, Junior Walker kind of blues. So it's Joe's modern approach to some of these blues ideas. Woo! 
<laughs> yeah. So Joe liked playing with some velocity, double time feel stuff. This is all double time, 16th note kind of ideas. But really, you know, that last thing, that classic third to the fifth bluesy gesture. Old classic stuff, but, but Joe's making it sound modern and energetic and alive, right? Barry Harris, still with that comping rhythm. Wow, Bob Cranshaw, still with that bass line. We hear Billy Higgins, you know, I mean, Joe Henderson is swinging for the fences here. But, but is Billy Higgins being super interactive? No, no, he's playing the groove. It's a big deal. There's that lick again. Joe's probably played that eight times in his solo so far. And we are not judging him that, oh, he played that thing eight times now. No, it sounds awesome every time, right? So for those of you who are players, remember that. Yeah, you're allowed to repeat yourself. It's okay. It's preferred. So, okay, so we don't have that comping rhythm now. Interesting. So when the piano solo starts, he leaves the comping for the first time. We're, what, 15 choruses into the song. So we hear Billy Higgins still catching it on the snare drum. And in Barry's solo, there's some, there's a lot of octave playing, and then, and then where he's harmonizing his lines, right? He's moving unison rhythms, right? He's playing two hands, but octaves. And we don't hear him comping for himself the way, you know, most piano players would in most recording sessions. more like a horn player, right? Horn players can't really comp for themselves. And even there when he's adding harmony, it's all relative to the rhythm of his melody. Interesting. Okay, so Joe and Lee come in and now they're comping behind him. And what is the comping? Well, it was what Barry Harris was doing, but it's also measures one and two of the melody. Right? So the melody itself is a great background for this solo. And again, Barry isn't, I don't think he's once comped that wasn't related to the line he's playing. Very interesting. Great opening to the bass solo. Bluesy, right? Repetition and blues. Like that right there, those eight measures should be required listening and transcribing for every jazz musician in their first couple years. Like that was it, man. And, and it's clear, like you can really hear it. It's well recorded. Great bass solo, man. Just fantastic lines, right? And Billy Higgins and Barry Harris are just staying home with that one rhythm, catching it on the snare drum. It's just, you know, very out of the way. It's just the fabric of this universe is that rhythm, right? And they bring Bob Cranshaw up in the mix, you know, so we can hear it nicely uh, over top. Wow, perfect. Is this the end of the solo? It is, so like the, the, there was a little, it was that a miscommunication, they got the break in there. It was all good, but maybe it could have been a little tighter, but man, I'm not gonna mess with this take. If I'm producing this session, I'm not gonna ask for another take. This is killing, right? <laughs> Listen into Billy Higgins' ride cymbal again. Just see if you can kind of hear that. Dang, 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 dang. 
Has it changed from the beginning? I'm not sure. Maybe it's swinging a little less. That's interesting. I'd, I'd love to. It would be great if we could hear it a little stronger. It seems like maybe it was really overtly swinging a little more at the top of the recording than this. But this is still has that lilt to it that the comping has less. Very fascinating. And man, Joe and Lee just sound like one big instrument, don't they? I mean, they play together so well. They did so many recording sessions together. So that's two times head out. So it's, it's a long recording. Or what are we, 10, 12 minutes in at this point? So how are they gonna end? Oh, so it seems like a board fade. So you hear that? So it's not the band getting softer. In the recording booth, they just kind of, you know, the band played on and they brought the levels down. And so a board fade is what's that called? The mixing board, they, they do a fade. So pretty interesting. So for every musician that's ever played this live, we can't really do the board fade, so we have to figure out some other ending. So oftentimes we just end short. Actually, not short. You know, usually there's that break, ending on a big E flat seven or something at the end. Okay, well, a really fun tune to listen to, right? I'm sure those jazz fans out there, uh, you know, who've been listening to this music for a long time, you know this recording. If there are folks out there who are hearing this for the first time, the whole album is great. Amazing playing. And fascinating to know what's going on in the rhythm section, kind of behind the front line, right? So this is a song that we're doing inside Jazzwire right now. Inside Jazzwire, we always have three lessons going on at once. One for more advanced players, we call them the blue community. So right now we're working on dolphin dance, Herbie Hancock's dolphin dance. For the red community, more intermediate players, we happen to be working on this song. For the green community, folks who are newer to jazz, we're working on meditation, great Antonio Carlos Jobim tune. We spend three weeks on each, uh, on each song. So we're in week two of three lessons for Sidewinder. I would love for you to hear those lessons. And so you can come in, do the free trial. You can hear hundreds of lessons on hundreds of songs. So come in, check out what we're talking about. One of the things that I'm challenging in the second lesson, challenging the groups inside uh, Jazzwire to do, is find a combination between the minor pentatonic bluesy, sort of overtly blues sound, which we heard plenty from all the players there, and then more of the sort of straight ahead dominant blues kind of sound, which we hear from all jazz players pretty much, and finding that combination. So it's two very different palettes or two different approaches to the art and how we mix them together, not sort of being too much on one side, too much on the other side, or really comfortable with one approach, but as a player, not so comfortable with the other. That's a masterclass right there from all those great solos, four great solos on that uh, album. And if you're a drummer, yeah, hang out with Billy Higgins and find out what Billy Higgins is doing. That is just incredible. So thank you for being here with us. Thanks for the folks that reached out to me about lessons. And, and if you didn't reach out yet, but you're interested, you can get a hold of me and, um, and we can find a way to work together. And if it isn't uh, with private lessons, we can work together inside Jazzwire. Nice and easy. All right, everybody, thank you for being here with me this week. I'll see you next week.